guys, how's it going tonight? So uh, this is the how-to and the plan to save the planet. And it's actually really easy to do. It's, uh, you know, if you look at everything all at once, like all the challenges and all the things that we have to do, just straight out, and it can be overwhelming. So you got to break it down into categories and, you know, and then take on these challenges and talk about it and really get everyone working together at least as much as possible. So because of that, and like, and you got to go around if you want to save the planet, you got to go around and, um, you know, you can't be blaming emissions because it's not emissions that cause climate change, it's fossil fuel extraction. So that's really the first step is just, just get that information out there because the information's there, we can prove it. And that way you get more people on the same side and more people working to the same cause. And you can you really utilize the like the consciousness of humanity and, and, and just our willpower to benefit all people and to ultimately come together and save this planet because that's what we're going to have to do. So step one, prove it needs save prove the planet needs saving and the cause which is fossil fuel extraction and number two because there's lots we got to do and time is really important we have to uh we're gonna have to go through a, a transitional phase where like we just slow down the current economy and that doesn't mean stopping it but we got to slow it down and COVID has given us a really strong path or knowledge towards like what are essential so you know keep those essentials going we know where we're weak so let's focus on those on those points and keep that going um and ultimately like this is actually kind of like the same way that would work to actually beat covid and beat pandemics because you're really limiting long distance travel admitting that you know it's fossil fuel consumption uh, that's really driving climate change. So you slow that down. You, you get communities, you know, uh, a little bit more like active and together. And it doesn't mean like going through this transitional phase, which is ultimately almost like you could almost call it like a hibernation type period. That doesn't mean we sit in our houses at home. That means like rather than going across the city or across the country or across the state, we, 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 participate more in our local communities and so we can take a lot of steps in making our local community stronger you know and there's little things that we can do that can go a long way like i've talked before about having a uh, like creating like a, a walmart or even transitioning walmart to do this or or any corporation or just any locally owned like supermarket and have like local the local area growing their own gardens and then selling it to that supermarket and then sell and then having that supermarket distributing the food to the people. That's just something we can do to, you know, create jobs and create like a little bit of an economy in the, in, in the, in the back of, in the, on the back burner. So, you know, just for people to do. And, you know, by subsidizing that, you could actually make it so that they're getting paid more than the food like get by giving the food they're getting paid more for that than the food that they have to buy so i mean like that's just one way we can strengthen communities and also like get our reliance off of uh, fossil fuels there's things we can do like i I've, I've thought even just little things here like like uh you know we got a farmer's market right why not make the farmer's market mobile so you got a truck that goes around to the neighborhoods because then you got one truck you know go into areas where everybody can go there and you know it's just like those little steps uh go a long way in conserving fossil fuels and so a key point here and like probably the most important one is the financial system i've said before we have a financial system right now that's reliant on an economy that's strong and that needs growth really to be successful. And the economy itself is reliant on fossil fuel extraction, which is the cause of climate change. So we have to acknowledge that and work together, put our brains together and figure out how we can make this financial system really work and and so that people aren't going to be scared of this change. Because when we talk about taking away fossil fuels, People are going to be worried. Oh, how am I going to pay my mortgage? So we need to provide solutions on that. And I've suggested a few things like, you know, with the rise of cryptocurrencies, there's lots we can do there. But it's really important to work with the central bank. But we have to, the central bank has to put out some ideas for us so that we can work with them and, and navigate this, uh, that that's that complicated process. Because that, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Um, but again, we can't let that stop us. So we got to keep moving forward and, and, and get through that. And we do that together. 
it's really the only way like a key fundamental to the financial system is like support for the oil workers for example like these are people who are going to be probably the most reluctant to change and to get off of fossil fuels so uh you know like let's let's, let's make it so that they don't have to worry so that whether it's training whether it's another job or whether it's just a, a, a something like get get them some financial help but that can be sustained so that we don't have to go through a period, like worries of hyperinflation or crashing the bank or what have you figure out something to help those guys and helping out the oil workers is really important because uh, you know then we'll hear stories about you know things that have happened in the oil industry like i've heard this one story where this city where and i've heard it from multiple sources so I, it must be true but where they're digging for oil and they hit like a a, a pocket of natural gas and like the amount of natural gas they said that came out of there was the equivalent to like a week's worth of a, uh, like a million people, you know, and we gotta, we gotta utilize these resources and, and, and not waste like that. Things like that. You'll hear lots of stories about that. Um, if we, if we get going down this path and, and it's those stories that'll be liberating and, and really help this movement and, and, and bring people together and like recognize how bad this industry is for our planet, for our health and, 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 and really motivate change. Uh, so then everything else breaks down to like everything we got to do. Like, you know, if you, you, I can get into all these subjects and go into detail, but that would end up being like an hour video. I don't mind doing that, but if you guys are interested in, in specific areas, well, let me know, you know, we have to prioritize things as well. Like, you know, first responders are a top priority. I always say, you know, uh, farmers first it's always because we got to keep that farm equipment going i always promote biodiesels you know we want to create jobs some of the jobs we may have to create aren't going to be that glamorous you know like we but we got to get to a point where our labor is actually cheaper than uh than, than the oil product and stuff and we can't let that that's part of the financial system we can't let the financial system or put barriers there to make these changes and uh in innovation in this area and like you know agriculture like everyone's saying oh we got uh issues with uh you know you know cow farts cause climate change well that's just not the way it is if you actually had a bunch of ranchers out there using horseback you know and you could get a lot of, a large amount of cattle grazing off of the land you're using less fossil fuels by making that type of transition and that's a great thing to do. It should be acknowledged and promoted. And let's talk about that. And then just get like uh, better sustainable feeding programs for winter feed and stuff like that. But, you know, that's a, that's a, just one thing of many to talk about. Uh, let's see what else here. So innovation is by far the biggest subject, you know, like I'm promoting biofuels, bioproducts. And that means like our waste. That means, you know, refining vegetation and plant life to, you know, a a point where you can use it we can do things like uh you know agriculture is another big section right you know where instead of using things like monsanto and all these oil-based products you know just have controlled burns if a, if a crop gets infested or something you do a burn and that creates uh nutrients and and, and it rejuvenates the soil for a better crop on the in the next season or you know if you can get a short season in or whatever then do that but you know that's just a, a, a major change in agricultural and the farming systems that we need to make but ultimately farmers first and then after that like transportation we need to make sure that we get we can get the food to the people who need it and so that's top priority um like I, I do, and we got to work with companies and hopefully they're willing to work with us and we got to get through these barriers of profit and whatever and put that as really put that aside because that'll ultimately come back but we got to go through this phase and do everything we can to just keep this thing going so that people aren't worried um so a just dis distribution system uh you know like uh bezos there uh amazon they had a good idea about about using blimps or whatever uh, you know like let's let's help them out with that and uh let's make it so that you know they're they're really like providing for everybody and working for companies outside of their own and things like that and uh you know like that could be a really positive movement that could help everybody in in doing what we need to do and and keeping this economy going in a more, much more sustainable way um so again innovation yeah 
so all these bioproducts, you know, to replace fossil fuels, it's like, and we and we got to stop the bleeding of the planet. The planet's bleeding. Like we got uncapped oil wells all the, all over the place. Like we got to get those plugged up so we seal that earth, so we seal the earth's core. It's a key fundamental. Stop the bleeding, and that's ultimately what we're what we're doing here. We can't save the planet if we can't stop it from bleeding. So you know, you can use those too. Like you know. There's like old uranium mines that are spewing out that that radioactive gas. Well, you put a bunch of biomass in there, and 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 over time that'll that'll refine into usable energy. And then you just take it out and plug it up again, you know. And it's it's a slow slower process, but you know, you just do everything you can. It's just like in when I talked about the financial system. If we can come up with a much stronger financial system, one that our powerful nations and wealthy nations aren't worried about the gold reserves you know then all of a sudden all that gold we could use and it could be actually put into proper use and monetized and actually make money and not having to sit there like as a, as a financial reserve you know you can actually use the gold to produce energy without having to do more mining and things like that um so and obviously like like i said everything's going to be under innovation energy production and an energy grid distribution uh, so like, you know, I've, I've been on here talking all the time about electromagnetic generators, you know, advancing uh, um, our, our atomic energy uh, production and things like this. So that's a top innovation. And there's lots of ground and being made in that area right now all over the world. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to help and I'll keep doing everything I can. I don't know where you guys are at on that, but it should be easy to do. I've recently explained what I call element A, which is antimatter or dark matter, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so, you know, we can keep, we, we can keep doing that and, and moving in that. And ultimately, because what we want to do is, is make an abundance of energy for the city. And then if we have to make upgrades to the energy grid, then yeah. Okay, great. Let's do that. And then we can make like a transit system based on like a, a like a, a electric rail line. I forget what they're called, but you know, just, and, and then you have like a public transportation system. Cause that's a key innovative thing that we need to do to make the transition. Cause we're ultimately going to be taking these cars off the road. So we need to replace that. And that's top priority. Get people moving around um, and keep them going. You know, I talked about recycling plants before in an old video I did when I talked about the, uh, uh, the atomic generators. Um, so, you know, recycling plants, like we're throwing out all this old plastic. There's got to be a way that we can take that old plastic, melt it down, reuse it, you know. And if you can't, then you burn it, make incinerators, incinerators that, that create energy. You know, again, we put, we're, we're coming at this energy thing every way we can because we have to stop deforestation too. That's a key fundamental to saving the planet and the solar system. So we got to stop deforestation, use what we already have cut down and keep and reuse, but stop cutting like old growth, you know, super massive trees. We don't want to cut those down. Those are so important to our health and to the, to the planet and to the, to nature itself. Um, so recycling plants, top priority in innovation, uh, you know, and we can make leaps and gains in that. It's a great investment for investors. You want, you want to stuff to do in the stock market. There's a, there, there's a, uh, a really good thing because, you know, having a peace plan like i got a peace plan written down there i can't talk a lot specifically about peace because i'm not really there with you guys to talk about it uh it's easy for me to find peace within myself but to talk about other issues that are complex i have to really be listening to you and working with you and i can't i can't do that from where i am but uh i would love to and i it's really important because if we do that if we can actually scale back the amount of military that our nations need that's a ton of metal and a, it's a ton of supplies that we can actually use for to benefit humanity and that we can use in in future developments and innovation and whatnot uh sorry about that noise there dogs playing around um yeah and and like obviously part of the peace plan is really essential because not only is it just horrible for the for for communities for people and creating creating humanitarian disasters but it also in itself just uses so much fossil fuels that you know you it, it's a key fundamental in having a peace plan for everybody and uh, again you know i'd love to help and i wish you guys the best in in coming together in peace and uh you know so hopefully so so much we can do with the economy like i said right now we just got to slow things down a little bit and, and and rebuild like you know replace all these all these uh fossil fuels with the biofuels i was talking about that'll take time like you know but we can start with de-legislating things like i i heard before like you know 
one of the products that's really good is a hemp product. You know, hemp is a really fast growing and produces a lot of oils. So let's get to a point where we can refine those oils to replace the fossil fuel oils that we have been using. You know, solutions, solutions are everywhere. We just got to act on it and do it and really get innovative about it and not let like for all these old laws and whatever stop us. You know, and even like little things like, you know, let's keep built for what homes we build. Let's get the homeless houses and we can build tiny homes. Let's let's make it so there's no regulations working against tiny homes. And and because these things are good for conserving energy. And and, you know, we can I, I, in certain cities, you know, you can fit them in a backyard that already exists. So we're not spreading out our cities further so we can we kind of fill in the city a bit more like I know in Canada here, that's kind of an issue because we're, we're already really spread out. We're really lucky because we've got a lot of land. But there's, you know, you can add value to the property and get more people in there. And by creating the, uh, the, um, the infrastructure for the city, you're, you're making it so more people can utilize that infrastructure. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, I can go back to the economy and talk more about that. And I really have focused up. I shouldn't say focus, but I thought a lot in the past. I'm not a nationalist per se, but like I've always felt that like if a nation can be more sovereign, if a nation can really be more like producing for itself and less reliant on exportation and in, imports, you're again right there. You're just reducing so much fossil fuels that that's really important. So I believe ultimately in strengthening nations and communities. And but, uh, you know, let's not uh, lose track of things here. We got to help each other out and uh, support each other and be there when other nations uh, are, you know, falling behind in something. And, and just really remember to be compassionate and to love thy neighbor. Um, so, yeah, agriculture, I already touched on that a bit. And, uh, you know, one of the things like when I mentioned Monsanto, but I mean, like, we're talking about making things sustainable and that means helping farmers out in every way we can and helping out the community and everything we can. Uh, you know, one of the things that they've done with these GMO foods is make it so that uh, the seed dies after like one season, like that should be outlawed. Well, you know, that's a big conversation. I shouldn't talk about GMOs right now, but uh, you know, cause there, there's actually maybe that's maybe a positive thing. Cause if that GMO crop, which could be hazardous to our health or whatever ends up taking over all the naturally grown crops. Maybe we do want it to die real quick, but then again, maybe it mutates, you know, something to consider. I'm always for natural products and for like a natural earth. It's just what I stand for. Cause there's, um, you know, even though there's like short term benefits for that, there's also negative consequences for playing with the, the, the natural DNA of the planet. Um, yeah, so peace plan, like, I mean, I could get into talking about judicial systems and really just like doing more online, you know, making sure people have like, uh, phones and laptops, communication devices, so the people stay connected so people can follow these things and learn. And like, you know, if having a judicial system, maybe considering it more online because they're public anyway, you know, again, just little steps like that actually reduce the amount of fossil fuel consumption that we, we need. You know, and, and I understand there's certain areas like where you need the court system going. I'm not saying to stop it, but just little steps. Everything we do counts in this. OK, um, you know, a space treaty, you know, like part of it. And, and you got to work that into like the peace plan. But like right now, uh, all this, uh, all these satellites and everything we're putting into space is ultimately harm, harmful to our solar system and through through the way that you know, energies transferred and stuff. And you're taking so much out of like what would be like a, the solar grid of sorts. And so like, that's just simple. Like we, we need the nations to work together so that like, and, and, and even corporations like having 30,000 satellites from SpaceX up there. And then, you know, all of a sudden we want another competing industry, like, like uh, blue origin comes along and then they want to put another 30,000 up. So now we got like, double the amount of satellites that shouldn't be there in the first place but now we have double the amount just because we want to co compete for uh for this capitalism type philosophy like that's ultimately really harmful and so we need to come together and utilize our resources and work together and you know when we're talking about blue origin competing with spacex let's instead of competing let's somehow put our heads together and and, and work to make the industries better and maybe you got to consider demonetizing that especially space exploration Things like that should be really demonetized. And when we do, like, it's a big, it's a big topic. The space, like, a, a space treaty. Uh, 
you know, we put our heads together and like, we could, it's, that's not, I'm not saying we stop space treaty. It'll that, like stop space exploration. That'll never happen, but let's ta- make better targets and let's, let's utilize our stuff. And so that nations aren't competing as nations. So we're not wasting all these resources and, and rockets and, and stuff going up there. Cause those, ultimately those will take fuel and all the space junk is bad. So let's work together and utilize what we do have up there. And so we need China, Russia, America, to work with all themselves and with all the other countries. I'm not forgetting about you, India. We need you in there too, man. You're part of this, Modi. Come on, let's work together. Um, you know, so I mean, like, and then talking about laws and policies and, and then you can break it down into human rights, but it, th- that's a huge start. That's a lot to talk about right there with all this innovation and all these things that we, we can do. But I mean, you know, and strengthen human rights, strengthen the United Nations and, and, and really like, and, and, and somehow I would almost, I, I think a lot about making those changes beneficial to, to us, to, to, to the humans and in, in, in a way that motivates na- uh, like nations, you know, like we want to, uh, we want to give nations a, a, an incentive to, to respect, you know, human rights and, and, you know, those can all break down, like whether it be free speech or access to information or free education, you know, but there's going to be negative ones too. We have to acknowledge we're in this position right now because we're overpopulated. So, you know, we got to maybe, we should, I think we should consider having, like, if, if we can be honest about fossil fuel extraction being the cause of climate change, then we can be honest about, like, the fact that our consumption is driving climate change and part of our the massive population we have is 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 all is, is negative so i mean but at the same time i have the right and this is like a real controversial thing there's people out there that'll be offended by this but you know like we're overpopulated but at the same time i have the right to re- reproduction and uh, re- yeah and uh and um you know you can do things like that are really that really promote this and are really a guideline. Like I, I, I promote all the time free healthcare, but if you go over that, you know, if, if you have more than a few kids or whatever during this time where we're really trying to save the planet and we're uh, trying to reduce fossil fuel extraction, uh, you know, we got to acknowledge that, but you in an incentive for the people is to provide them with free healthcare. And that's got to come back to the financial system. The financial system has, sorry about that financial system has to be able to uh to take that challenge on and to make that possible and and then uh you know and if someone you know doesn't follow the guidelines or whatever then they have to pay so like wealthy people they don't have to follow that guideline because they can just you know pay and put into it and then that way even though they're 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 consuming a bit more they're also contributing more financially to the system so the system has to kind of we have we have to kind of work with the system and uh and whatnot and go forward so yeah i mean like and there's little things we can do like i've always talked about you know like doing police is some policing uh law enforcement i should say is something that uh you know we, we can really like expand on jobs and have job like by creating more police and having them more locally that's less pe- police that actually have to drive i always talked about making it to a two-tier system when it comes to policing like you have your regular police force that you have now but then on top of that you have like a local police force that's localized and that they can be the first ones there on scene and if things get out of control then they have to call the uh call the other guys um you know and like in in police like i talk about uh upgrading the transportation grid so like you know you put uh, you you put a little cart or you little put put on the cart but <coughs> excuse me Put a little area in in the bus so that uh, police can use the bus and there's a police presence on the bus because we, we or, or the transit system whatever whatever so then that's the way that they can they can utilize these resources too because even though first responders are top priority they also have to do what they can to reduce their consumption as well it has to be across the board so um yeah i don't know i think that's a good start for today and uh you know i i got written down here too i don't know if i touched on new de- development priorities like all right i I did already talk about this stuff but it's like get people to get get people homes you know uh the energy infrastructure the farmers transportation first responders i hit on pretty much everything uh you know it's a major topic and i absolutely don't mind coming back and revisiting this and uh, you know i hope that you guys are interested in it and i hope this helps and gives a little bit of a guideline and uh you know let's work together i want to work with everybody and uh you know, as if we do this, 
our individual success or is everyone's success or vice versa. And so uh, good luck. And I, uh, <clears throat> I hope to hear good things out of COP26. I hope you guys can ultimately strengthen relations and, uh, you know, work together uh, across borders and don't let uh, individual nations, if they're going to be opposed to making the changes that we need to make, stop you. But let's also constructively try and work with them in every way that we can so that they're encouraged to come in and uh, be a part of the change we need for the entire world. Thanks. Talk to you guys later.